All you trolls out there who hate Chili, I don't care. Guess what? Innocent, innocent guys in jail. Do you want to be that innocent guy in jail? No, then listen up, okay? We got the legal aid defense, uh, defense fund for Chili right here. Um, while we're listening to the video, I'm going to put this in the chat box and I'm gonna pin it to the top. If you wanna help Chili, I appreciate it. There's a couple ways we can do it. We can do it by giving him, helping him monetarily, and we can help him by binge watching his vi YouTube videos. I would, I would suggest starting with the most popular because those are the most entertaining and the most informative. And we can keep his channel going while he's in prison. If, if this was what you would want done to you if you were in prison, then maybe we should do this to him. Okay, so let me get... Let me get my, oh yeah, yeah. I got to bring this up right here. Okay, so we're going to listen to this in its entirety. As long as this is good, we're going to be good. I'm going to play it in its entirety and then I'll come back and talk with you. This is Chili. He recorded this on Sunday night for you guys so he could let you know what's going uh, through his mind and what's happening in jail and maybe try to empathize with him and put yourself in his shoes. Is this the situation you would want to be in. Let's go. To accept this free call, press one. To refuse this free call, thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. To Team DLZ, today is Sunday, March 24th, 2024. This is officially my fifth day in jail. I want to explain to you how this place works a little bit. So when I was intaked from the courtroom into the jail, they put me in the torture cuffs, and the bailiff, who I had called a pig, put the torture cuffs on nice and tight. And you look at the room that's dark oak and black, and there's black robes and deep red overtones in the room. And ironically, just less than 40 feet away, there's a door that leads to the dungeon. And when they open the door, it's all white with a stripe that goes around the room, and the room's... 12 feet by 8 feet deep and they put you in there in the torture cuffs and they shut the door. You look around and there's nothing there but you. And then maybe a minute later the two bailiffs came in and immediately began to pat me down briskly as though they were giving me a terrible massage from my ankles up to the top of my hair. Their hands are coursing over my body and they're feeling every single inch of my pants, my suit jacket. They begin to crumple it and pull on it and twist it because I'm already in the torture cuffs and they're tight. And I tell them, please, the torture cuffs are, are tight. We don't have to like each other, but you don't have to torture me. And he says, you'll be out of them in a minute. And then he says, I'm going to bring your lawyer in. They leave as quickly as they came in. And then the lawyer comes in and Michael, me, his face is red and he's disoriented. And I look at him and I actually say to him, are you okay? He says, I'm, I'm okay. And I look at him and I say, What's, what happens now? How do, how do we get me out of here? And he said, I'll file an appeal with the district court. And then I said, how long, Michael? So it'll take two weeks. So I'm going to shock. And at the same time, then the two bailiffs come in and say, what do you want us to do with your phones? And I said, I don't know. And then I said, just give them to my lawyer. So my lawyer takes my phones and then they take me down a corridor that no one has access to. The walls still have like the house being built where there's still paste and covering of the nails with the stucco and they take me down the hallway and then I'm in the dungeon. And as soon as I enter into the dungeon, it's this, there's, you know, hundreds of people there and there's half of them or more are people in these, these sh shackles. They're in chains. They got a chain around their waist, chain, uh, shack, torture cuffs on each wrist and the, the shackles are attached to the chain. And then you, they walk me through and they say, let's, let's switch him up. So then they bring me over and they take the torture cuffs off. They say, take off your jacket. I take off my jacket. And then they say, all right, take off your shoes. I take off my shoes, one shoe, one sock. And then they, they take a flashlight and they look at my feet and they roll my pant leg up. And then they they take me from there. And they now they say, take off your overshirt and just wear your, wear your overshirt. Get rid of your white T-shirt because it's going to be cold. And so then they... I take off both shirts and then I put the button on, the white button up. My, my suit pants are fairly new, so is my shirt's brand new. And so then I'm just wearing orange, like water shoes. And then I'm wearing my slacks and my button up white dress shirt. And then they take me over to medical and uh, they take my blood pressure. And my blood pressure is 170 over 110. And she says, well, do you have high blood pressure? And I say, I, I used to. I took care of it. I said, isn't that pretty high? And she said, it's not so high 
understanding the circumstances. And then I, I say understanding the circumstances. She says, yeah, in the situation that you're in now, it, it's, it's, it's expected your blood pressure is going to be a little high. And I said, but isn't that really high? She said, you'll be okay. And then they take me from there in shackles, and they sit me down on a bench, and then they shackle me into a chair. And then I have to sit in this chair, and then I look over to the other people, and I say, hey, was your blood pressure high? Wow, Jersey Bob, I really appreciate that super chat. Please, please, you guys, give your support to Chili, okay? This right here is a fundraiser for Chili. That $50, Jersey Bob, I'll make sure that Chili, Chili gets it. But you got to realize when you send a super chat through this platform right here, YouTube takes 40 or 50% right off the top. So it'd be better to give to him through his GoFundMe because they only take 2.3%. And also, I just wanted to tell you, when I get done playing this message for, uh, to you from Chile, um, I'm going to go over, I'm going to refresh this GoFundMe and anybody who gave uh, $20 or more, I'm going to read your, you know, your name or your message or whatever. So that's what I'm going to do as soon as we get done with this this uh, message. So I appreciate Thank you guys so much for coming back. It's humbling. I appreciate it. And we're going to get back into this. And they say, yeah. And I said, did she say to you, it's, it's, it's not high for the circumstances. And they said, yes. And then I asked multiple people and they say, yes. And then I go into a holding cell and I'm in this holding cell. I get in there maybe around three or four o'clock and I'm in this holding tank until four o'clock in the morning. You can't, you, you can lay down, but it's freezing freezing cold and so then I'm in the holding cell for 12 15 hours I don't know how long and then they say you're transferred upstairs and I go upstairs and now this is a room it's a big room like a big auditorium room there's there's stainless steel tables in the middle with stainless steel stools that go around them and there's probably four of them and there's you know six or eight stools at each table so there's, you know maybe 50 people considered these four tables and around the room are doors I don't know where those doors lead so now at this point I have to take off all my clothes drop them into a bag and then walk into the shower area and I go into the shower and the guard tells me go in there and shower drop all your clothes outside put them in a the bag and so I do that we don't put them in bags so I go in the shower and then they come around they take the bag so you're buck naked in the shower and then I take a shower and then the guard comes around he says all right open your mouth I open my mouth he says all right turn around spread your butt cheeks, squat and cough. I don't. I just turned around, tapped the butt sides of my butt cheeks, and, <laughs> and the guard was about 70, and he's like, good enough. And then uh, I come out, they give me a pair of these, so I'm wearing the exact same clothes that I put on Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. Then this is called isolation for 24 to 48 hours. It's rooms of one or two people. For me, it's going to be two. And so I... I go to this, he says, your name, DeCastro, inmate number. I now have it memorized, 1669561. And then I go, and he says, you and you go to room number 37. I'm walking to the room, and the guy next to me passes me. And I think, I guess he's in a hurry to get to the room. We walk into the room. He goes to the two bunks. He grabs the two mattresses, looks at them, picks the mattress he wants, puts it on the bottom bunk, and then throws the other one on the upper bunk, then takes the sheets we got and the blanket, quickly makes himself a bed, gets in the bed and puts the covers over his head. <laughs> it was kind of like a surreal moment. I was like, all right. So then I said, hey, man, I'm chilly. Nice to meet you. He said, Nick, I said, man, this is hell. And he said, not as bad as war. I said, all right. And then he, he continued to stay under the covers. Then I put my 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 sheets on my, my one-inch thick mattress. And then I lay down up there, and you're in this room that's five and a half feet, six feet wide by eight feet deep two of us and there's a metal stainless steel shitter there and on the back of the shitter is a drinking fountain and that's the water you're going to have to drink i'm there for maybe two minutes and the door comes and opens the guy says the castro you're not in this cell and then i'm taken out of that cell and i'm putting in room 23 and i remember thinking it was michael jordan's number one of the largest investors in prisons in america is michael jordan so i go into number 23 and there's nobody there but me. So I take both mattresses, I put them on the lower bunk because the window's on the upper bunk, and that's where the sun comes in. But this particular room doesn't face the sun. It faces another building, so I'm grateful for that. So I take two mattresses, I lay them down, and I lay down, and I try to sleep, but I can't. So I start to do stretches. I'm doing stretches and counts of 30. I do every single kind of stretch I can do. I'm pacing back and forth. I stretch. I do 200, 300 push-ups. I do head handstand push-ups, I do burpees, I do 
mountain climbers, doing anything I can to get the time to pass. It's just dripping by so slow. And so then I, I go over to the mirror and I begin a, a set of positive affirmation. It's hard to t- tell you guys, but it's true. And I'm coming apart, you know. I've been in this room alone for 10 or 11 hours now and no stimulation. They bring food to the door, drop it off, close the door. No stimulation. It's, it's called lockdown. So you're stuck in this room. So I, the food is atrocious. I had been doing Ramadan up until that day. I had blown it one day in L.A., but I was trying to get back on track. And I, I was back on track. I was doing well. I, I had breakfast before the day started on Tuesday. So this was now, I don't know. I don't know. I've lost track of time, maybe Thursday morning. And so I now go over to the to the, to the window and I'm to the mirror and I'm giving myself positive affirmation. You're okay. You can get through this. You're okay. You can get through this. You're a good person. You haven't broken the law. You haven't done anything wrong. You're, this is going to be hard, but you can get through it. And, and it's just so hard because you have no other stimulation. So then at about 15, 16, maybe 17 hours, I don't know how long I've done sets and sets of stretches, counting to 30 sets and sets. And I'm just trying to, I'm just more flexible now than before I went in, but I'm just trying to get through it. And then at that point, they bring in a group of guys. You can see them all sitting at those tables I talked about initially. And there's maybe a dozen men there. And I look over the dozen men, and there was a, a black guy who I'd been holding with named Roy. And I literally said a prayer to God. Please, dear God, give me Roy. Please give me Roy in this cell. If there's anybody, because there was another guy in there who was about 22, 23, who came in the holding cell. And he was just so loud. I'll tell you what, I got I got five kids, five kids. We send them to school at five o'clock in the morning, every morning. And this guy's talking as though he's on a pedestal giving a speech to people in a, in a holding cell that's 15 feet by 10 feet wide. That, that, that It's horrible. And so I'm praying that I get Roy. And you know what happens? I get Roy in my room. Roy is a guy, he's 56 years old. He's been arrested on a 25-year-old warrant for attempted auto theft from 25 years ago in 1999 when he had a relationship with a woman that went sour. And then when they were breaking up, she called her car and stole it. And then he left town and never came back. Left Her car was in her driveway when he left. But since she called it and stolen, she he then had to had to face a felony warrant. Now, here in the state of Nevada, they do what's called a DNA test. So he had a mandatory DNA test because he was charged with a felony. Well, the mandatory DNA test makes it so that you have to be held for at least three days so they can get the DNA test through the lab. But remember, there's three uh, video, in Nevada. Okay. There's mining, there's casinos, and there's prisons. Mining is the least successful. Casinos is number one. The number two industry in Nevada is prisons and jails. So the DNA test that they put through, through the state legislature here in Nevada means that they can hold you for three days, meaning that the, each jail prison that holds you for three days can build a state for three days, at least of DNA testing. So that's why Roy is being held, really. He's being held because it's going to be a financial boom for the jail or prison industry. If the cops charge you with a felony here in Nevada, it's a mandatory DNA test. Now, remember, I don't have a computer in front of me. I'm just going by memory. So... Roy is in my cell now, and I've been in the cell alone for 16, 17, 18 hours. I don't know how long. I can't keep track of time. There's no clock. Roy gets in my cell, and I immediately begin to chatter to him like a school kid on a playground. I talk for 10 minutes straight. Finally, I say to him, Roy, look at me. Nobody will look you in the eye. None of the jailers will look at you. You're, you're treated like you are cattle with a dollar sign on your back. It's not that the guards are cruel. They're indifferent. They don't care. They don't give a damn. You have to follow a system, and they are flowing you through, and this is the money for the state of Nevada. And if you in any way, shape, or form get in the way of that money, they will deal with you. Under the 1980 case of Johnson versus Glick, the guards are to maintain order, and they can use reasonable force, objective reasonable force, to maintain that order. Now, here in this particular jail, they have banned the chokehold, and they've banned the chair, that torture chair that we see in so many videos. So now Roy is in there, and I finally tell him after 10 minutes of me talking, I say, Roy, please look at me. And he finally looks at me, and I say, man, connect with me, bro. Talk to me for a minute. And in that moment, it's the first human moment I've had in over 24 hours. And I immediately break down and tell him, I shouldn't be in here, Roy. And he, and he, and he, and then he, he says, neither should I, man. And he's, he's, this is a, 
an, he's an only child. He's a, he's a black man, and he's a strong person. And he says to me, Chili, you, you need to be strong, and you need to hold it together. I said, I'm going to hold it together, but for the love of God, man, we need human connection. If we don't have human connection, we are going to fail in here. And for the first time, Roy says to me, I know it. He says, damn it, I know it. And then he starts to talk, but he hadn't said a word. He just was all locked up inside. And then for the next maybe 30 minutes, we have this really human conversation. Yeah, NorCal Cop Watch just made a really good point in the chat. He says, Chili was attacked and arrested for filming the police. Chili was convicted because the judge ruled judge ruled on her feelings and not the law. And clearly, Chili obeyed both directives to not only step back, but he obeyed the directive to stop talking to the driver. And yet, Judge Ann Zimmerman still threw him in a cage for 180 days after he had victimized nobody. Let that sink in, guys. I, I see all you trolls out there going, let Chili rot in hell forever. I hope he gets another 180 days. I hope he gets abused by inmates. It's just, you know, crazy to me to think that somebody could actually commit no crime, hurt no one, threaten no one, steal no one's property, and still people are going to call for your head, you know, off with his head. We don't like him. We don't like the way, you know, I understand people not liking people. I don't like how he does things. I don't like what he says to the police. I don't like how he handles himself. His lawyers suck. This is all horrible. All that aside, do you think a human being should be locked in a cage for what Chili did? If you do, because guys, this is a direct assault against the first amendment. He didn't go to jail because he had a camera in his hand. He didn't go to jail for any other reason than he interfered with the, he in, how do you interfere with a cop when you're standing 10, 13 feet away from him? How do you resist arrest when no lawful order was given and the man who was attacked by the guy in the uniform didn't do anything wrong? I just need you to answer those questions for me. Conversation, And for the first time, I feel the, the, the lifeblood of humanity come back into my veins. I wipe my tears and I go back to the mirror and I do. And, and for people going, this is weak. Oh man, he's, he's being, he's so weak. He's being a coward. He's being a wimp. This is pathetic. This is humanity, man. This is humanity. If you don't experience fear, if you're not scared, if at times you don't like question, oh my God, what's going on here? What's going to happen in my life here? Then you're not a human being. And I can't, I can't sit here and say that you're being honest with yourself. I would hate to be in a cell like this. I would hate to be on lockdown and be forced to be in my bed, my bunk for 20 to 22 hours a day. Well, he deserves it. Look how he treated that, that uh, law enforcement agent inside that courtroom. Look how he treated officer Bork. Look at, look at the disdain that he had for Ann Zimmerman. He deserves it. Really? He deserves to be in jail because he had a, he had disdain for a black robe tyrant and a tyrant in a uniform in a courtroom. Give me a break. Another set of positive affirmation. I tell Roy, you should do it too. So now this is really incredible what I'm going to tell you right now. So for 30 minutes and I, Roy and I have the most human conversation you could possibly imagine. We talk about everything from our childhood to where we were raised to why we're in this dungeon and what the next process is going to be for us as we go through this. And so now there's only one toilet in there and there's a sink on the back of it. The water tastes like rusted pipes. It's horrible. And the toilet is stainless steel shitter is on the bottom of it and when you drink the fountain water it drains down into the toilet Roy's a big flusher he likes everything to be flushed and so you know he has to spit and so he's spitting he has high blood pressure his blood pressure is reading 190 over 120 he should be hospitalized but he's not and so we're in this room together and now we have to have a conversation that no two men should ever have to have and I say to Roy, I say to him, hey, listen, do you have to use the bathroom? And he says, actually, I do. I need to use the restroom soon. And so then I, 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 we're, at the, we're at the bottom of the pit of despair where neither one of us should actually be in jail at all whatsoever. Roy doesn't have a real criminal record, and I don't have any criminal record. They look me up here, all the guards have, and I don't have a criminal record besides being before 21 years old. I'm 49 now. So 
I say to Roy, listen, if you have to use the restroom, just let me know, and I will plug my ears, and I'll turn away. And he said, and I'll flush right away as if I have to use the restroom. And then we say, you know, I say to him, I, I say, I'm... Yeah, and that's also a good point. PC... PJC Net says it would have been suspended if he'd behaved in court. And, you know, quite possibly it would have gone different if he did behave in court, possibly. But, you know, people are always saying, well, look, if you if you comply, nothing's going to happen to you. Well, tell Daniel Shaver that he tried to comply with every single command from Mesa police officer Philip Brailsford. And where did that get him dead? Look at Philando Castile. He was he was in the process of complying with that Minnesota police officer when he got seven holes put inside of him. He was he was reaching for his concealed carry permit. So you know there's some there's some interest instances where you can comply and things go okay for you. There's some instances where you comply and things it's curtains for you. You're done. It could be that Chili could have crossed his T's and dotted his I's and said everything right in the eyes of the the tyrant in the robe, but he could have also gone to jail because she knew about his YouTube channel and she knows the disdain that he has for power-tripping, power-drunk, authoritarian psychopaths and badges and guns and uh, could have gave him the, the ax anyway. The bottom line is no no lawful order was given No law was broken. No crime was committed. No victim was created. That's the bottom line. Now, all you trolls out there, if you believe that Chili deserves to be in jail, and I believe you deserve to be in jail if you create a victim too, depending on the severity, depending on the severity, did you steal a candy bar from this family shop? Or did you sucker punch an elderly person at a bus stop or gas station because you know you're trying to be initiated into that gang or did you put a bullet in somebody's head who didn't deserve it you know it depends on the depends on the severity of the crime is where we determine the severity of the punishment so yeah people that harm other people people that damage people's property people that you know unrepentantly continue to do wrong to their neighbor they deserve some jail time But if you didn't create a victim, you really deserve to go into a cage and be humiliated and demoralized like this. Well, make your case. Let's hear it. You know, you you can continue with the the little ad hominems and, you know, 30 percent goes to YouTube and 20 percent goes up chili nose. Okay, prove it. Prove 20 percent of what he makes goes up chili's nose. Prove that. You know, accusation without substantiation is the height of ignorance. And you are showing yourself a real fool when you make a statement that you can't support. So go ahead, support your statements. If you can't, you're a fool. Sorry to tell you this, but it's just a simple fact. When you go to the bathroom, you have to go poop. No other man should have to listen to another man crackle and pop as they take a shit in a toilet. No, 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 nobody should have to, to... Listen to another man crackle and pop as they take a shit. And we both laugh for the first time that we've been in there. We both laugh and say, that is the most honest thing I've ever heard. And I say it's a pet peeve of mine when I go into these restaurants, restaurant stalls in the bathroom and, uh, and they don't play music in the bathroom. You have to go to the bathroom, but there is a sound to going poop. And he says, yeah, there's a sound to going poop. There is. As gross as it may be, unfortunately, when you're put into a situation like we are, you have no choice but to talk about the most human of function, the most, the despair of explaining to another person that they shouldn't have to hear you go to the bathroom. And that's what we have to talk about. And so then it's maybe... 20 minutes after that. I don't know because there's no way to keep track of time. You're looking out the window for people who are coming in, but if you look out that window too long, a little tiny window, four inches wide by maybe 24 inches tall, and the, the guards do not, there's a button there that you can push a light, and if you push that light, you're going to be, you may don't push the light. Unless it's a medical emergency, you don't push that light.
because there's only one guard out there, and it's a great big, huge auditorium with those 50 seats I told you about. But we're on 24 to 48 hour lockdown as we're processed in, and I'm literally losing my mind inside of this room. And so Roy says to me, okay, Chili, I, I have to go to the bathroom. And so at that point, I get on the lower bunk, I plug both my ears, and I start to hum, hum, with my ears plugged because I really don't want to hear another man go to the bathroom. And then I hear the slosh of the toilet. It's like a, it's like a tornado. It's like a hurricane inside of a stainless steel can. And then I hear a moment later, and then I'm still humming. And then I hear Roy say, hey, man, you can stop humming now. And, and, and so I unplug my ears, and I turn around, and he's gone to the bathroom in maybe a minute, maybe one minute. Now, every man over 40 years old knows that when you go to the bathroom as a man, you sit down on the toilet. Sometimes it's even better than sex to sit down on the toilet when you're over 40 years old to let your bowels relax, and you can sit there and take a shit. And I hate to be so crude, but this is the actual process of the dungeon, and you need to hear it. You need to hear that there's no decency, that every bit of pride is stripped from you, that you are broken down to the most disgusting level that you could possibly even imagine, where you have to talk to another man about how you're going to go to the bathroom in front of him. And so he goes, he gets up, and then... He says to me, let me know if you have to go. And I, I say, I've been limiting my food intake. I've, I've been eating very tiny portions, and then I've been working off the food. So I haven't had to go to the bathroom. So now, after that, maybe I don't know how many minutes, hours, I don't know. But then the guard comes out to the middle of the auditorium and starts to speak. And he says, listen to me. Everybody come to the glass. And so Roy and I go to the glass, and he says, do not push the light on the door. If you push the light on the door and it's not a medical emergency, I'm going to come in there and get you out of there and lock you down. Do you understand? You think this lockdown's bad? It's not going to be a tenth of what we're going to go through if you push that light on that button, on that door, and it is not a medical emergency. Now, I'm going to serve food. When I come, when I come to the door, you are back by your bunks. We will drop the food off by the door. You can come to the door and grab it after we are gone. Do you understand? Knock on the door. So we knock. It wasn't a knock. It was something else. I don't think he said that. I don't think he said knock. I think my brain's just filling in holes. But I don't think he said knock. I think he just said, do you understand? And that was it. He didn't want any communication back from us. My brain is just, I'm, I'm trying to remember everything detail by detail, but it's all the days and nights are run together. I was arrested on Tuesday afternoon. I think today's Sunday, 24th, and, and I finally last night slept for the first time six hours straight. Before that, it was an hour here, two hours there, an hour here, two hours there. So then a little bit of time passes, and then they say, um, then they, 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 they call names. They call my name to Castro. And so then I go out, and we all go down to the table. He says, you're moving cells. You're going over to this holding cell instead of the one you're in with Roy, 23. So I grab my blanket. I grab the mat I was using, and I grab my pillow, and I bring everything over to the other bunk, to the other holding tank that's the same, five and a half feet by eight feet. Now, when I do that, I have two mats. Okay, here, here it goes. Now, the guard says, you have... You guys have 15 minutes to use the phones, and then we're, we're leaving here. And so then he goes, everybody back, lock down, get on the tables now. And he goes, Castro, he goes, you have two mattresses in that bunk over there. I said, you, you know, you told me to grab everything and bring it over there. He said, not the mattress. Everybody will stay locked down until the Castro gets the both mats over there. Uh, now I start to run, and the guard says, no running. So then, I, then I'm just double-stepping up the stairs. I grab the mat. I get it back. The entire room is grumbling my name and mad at me. So then I get over to the phones, and I look at the guys, and I say, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Don't let them divide and conquer. And the guys in the row all immediately agree that they're not going to let them divide and conquer. But then it's, this is the last holding tank before the next step is I'm there for maybe... 20 or 30 minutes, I don't know, because you can't keep track of time. And then they say, let's go, you're going to general population. So then they take me out of there, and then I walk back outside, and there's me and maybe six other guys. And then that group of six connects to another group of six that connects to another group of six. 
and now they're walking us down corridor after corridor after corridor. You have to walk along the line of the outside of the wall, keep your head down, walk along the wall, don't look at me. Put a one in the room if you've spent more than a day in jail, more than 24 hours in a jail. Put a one in the room. Look down, and I'm walking down the down the, the line. Then they put us in an elevator. Everybody has to walk to the back of the elevator and look at the back of the elevator. If there's someone in front of you, you look at the back of their head, and then you look slightly down. So I get in the elevator, and then they take it they take it up to the next floor. I don't know I don't know which floor because there's maybe ten or twelve floors here. I don't know how many floors are in this building. And then they take me up to they take me up to a a I don't know just another cell. And so then I get in and I'm in two. Actually, in the man, look at all the ones in the room. Those ones are all the people. You know, if you're being honest, who've spent more than a day in jail. That is a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And were you get when you went to jail? Were you guilty of committing a crime, or were you innocent? Or two and then N two and like Nancy, where I'm at right now. But before that, I was in two um, M or two O right next to the cell. So then I come into two M, and when I get in there, now I'm, I'm three days so far, two three days I think, and I'm wearing the same clothes. I stink. I've been doing hundreds and hundreds of push-ups, trying to keep my mind from wandering and counting them, so that you're, when you when I've done Wim Hof. I'm not sure if you Wim Hof daily breathing exercise. It's 11 minutes. If you don't do it, I do it pretty frequently, and so I do Wim Hof several times during this process. But I stink. I stink horribly. It, it, I, I can smell myself. So finally, when I get into 2N, or 2, 2M, I, I'm sorry, I think I'm in 2N now. And so then when I go in there, now I'm able to take a shower, but I have to put on the same clothes and the same underwear. I've actually washed my underwear twice because I've had the same pair of boxers for five days. Apparently, they're having a laundry problem here at the facility, and so they don't know when. They said maybe next week we're going to get new clothes. I think today's Sunday, so next week I think starts tomorrow, Monday. I'm hoping that's what happens. And so then I go into 2M, and when I get in there, it's a group of guys, and they're all about 25 to 35. I'm 49. So uh, I'm, in, I'm in pretty good shape, and, and, and so then we, we go out to the, to the, to the uh, rec room, which is maybe 20 feet wide by, by 60 feet long, and it's just a, a concrete slab with a dip machine and a pull-up machine that are the same machine. Just pull up on one side, dips on the other. And so then uh, I work out with these guys who are young. These guys are doing sets of 20, 25 pull-ups. I'm managing like 8, 10. <laughs> I'm struggling because I haven't been doing a lot of pull-ups, and I'm absolutely starving. I've had very little food. The food, a lot of the food is simply not edible. It's just not. So a couple people have put a little money on my commissary, and I'm so grateful you did it because... I can buy some chili and I can buy some beans from the commissary, but I can only order once a week. So I had a friend. I, 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 this is a complicated story. I don't think I have any more time to tell the next story, but I just want you guys to know that I'm okay and I'm going to be all right. And uh, Yeah, there you go. Put a two in the room if you want to be a part of the Ann, the Judge Ann Zimmerman fan club. We have, a, we have a, the most badass appeals attorney ever. I haven't been able to talk to him. I've called him three days in a row, and I've left him voicemails. And I, I have powerful people who are writing letters of recommendation for me. So if you're an attorney or if you're an officer of the court, you can write a letter of recommendation vouching for me that I've had hundreds of police encounters, and I've always preached nonviolence, always preached never to fight or shoot or attack police, ever. So this, uh, this judge was just completely out of her mind, and... And like I said, I took responsibility already and said I didn't do the best at court. So I don't belong in here. And uh, do I think that some people need to live in a box? Yeah, they're extraordinarily violent. They're mentally, they're criminally insane, and they need to live in a box. But mm -hmm. I was 95% of the people in this room, maybe 100%.
of these people, they need to go to a mandatory education. Every 30 minutes should be an educational seminar that you learn on a computer where you're doing basic math, basic English structure or Spanish structure. Because when you learn English, Spanish, math, Russian, science, those things change the way the neurons in the brain work. John Locke said, show me the education of a man and I'll show you his character. Well, these mm -hmm. characters are based that they're completely uneducated. A lot of these guys can't do basic algebra. And so they don't realize that what they're doing is going to have heavy consequences. They're going to be locked down. And so that's what this should be safe for. And this shouldn't be like this. You should have to go to 30 minutes of education every 30 minutes. And then the other 30 minutes, you should be in a regular facility where there's a toilet with toilet paper. That's another part, the, the bathroom and the toilet paper and the way it works. It, 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 I can't give it justice on the phone. I'm going to have to write it in the book. But the, the, the way that it's, like I said, I already gave you the gory details about the conversation Roy and I had. And it, it's just, mm -hmm. this is just not how you should treat another human being. Nobody here is learning a lesson. This is funding for the state and funding for the apparatus of the of the criminal injustice industry, and it's just so terrible. We, nobody's learning anything here, and the books are novels. Dan Brown's, uh, whatever it's called, I'm on the last 30 pages or 40 pages, and then I'm going to read Atlas Shrugged next. So it's just, but you're not learning anything. They're not creating new neurons in their brain, learning consequences because they learn basic algebra equation. Where's the computer screens where you learn basic math and basic English structure? Because those things actually teach you how to learn consequences. Where are the history yeah. lessons? Where are the, where are the riddles and rhymes you can solve right there in your own little cubicle where you have to learn and you have to pass this? And if you can't, then a virtual teacher comes on and says, how are you, why, why are you struggling, Chile? What's going on with you? I can't figure out why, you know, if E equals MC squared, why can't I get this into a quadratic formula? And then all of a sudden, my brain is working, and I'm starting to engage in thinking. And that's what makes people less criminal, when they can problem-solve their way out of situations instead of doing criminal mm -hmm. activity. And that's what needs to change. Now, there's people who are freaking criminally insane that want to beat their wife senseless till they're almost dead, that want to rob the store and put a gun to their face. And let me tell you something. The guys in here have told me the truth. The guy looked at me and said, I was a criminal, dude. I was shooting up cocaine and then going into liquor stores and robbing them, putting a gun to the head, pistol whipping people. And that guy did almost yeah. 20 years in prison in New York. And now he's in here on a car dealing thing. And I said to him, I said, I said I'm not going to say his name right now, but I think the guy we're hearing in the background that's like responding to Chile a little bit is his assistant. If you're, if you're asking about that, I said to him, Hey, you know, a, I said, Hey, why, why are you doing this? And he said, I haven't been in prison in 10 years. I'm 50 years old. I went to prison in my twenties and thirties. I got out and never did any of that smack again. And I was just doing a petty card game and he got arrested for a felony. And it's a hustle what he's doing. He told me straight up, Chile, I'm a con man. I have a stick. It's called a stick. It's called Three Card Monty. And, and mm -hmm. he showed me, he showed me I, I bought him a deck of cards from my commissary and gave it to him because he's so talented with cards. And then here's the thing. If you get arrested and get a felony, then you can't, do, you can't work in the casinos. And this guy's hands are just, you should see what he can do. But, of course, he can't do it because if he does anything like that, he's going to go to prison. So right. I don't think he's going to ever get better. But there's ways to fix people if you give them enough education. And there's people who need to be taught careers. They can sit in here and learn plumbing on the new artificial intelligence 3D programming. You could teach people how to do plumbing and how to put pieces together simply by, by, by going through a, a, a virtual system with artificial intelligence that teaches them how to do plumbing. And then after they're in here for three months, they get out and they go work as an apprentice. There's people who yeah. learn here who do who could do heavy labor, who can do construction work. They could learn how to do concrete. They could learn how to do finishing. They could learn how to do H H H A V C air conditioning. They could learn how to do it here in here with virtual terminals using AI that shows them how the components work together while they're learning basic math, English, history, science. And then their brains are working again, and they're sober in here because you can't get drugs in here the way you can on the street. So a lot of these people who are in here, half of them because of drugs, no longer are going to be on drugs. One guy told me earlier, look, I'm a heroin addict. I take Suboxone, and the Suboxone is the same as heroin. It's just a legal form mm -hmm. of it. And if I don't get my shot of Suboxone every week, then I go crazy, and I lose my mind, and I break the law. 
because I know once I'm right. lost, I'm going to get my suboxone again. And he told me that. Like he, he, just, mm-hmm. he just told me that. So there's a, there's a, there could be a better system created if we focused it more on rehabilitating and educating people than punishing them. And when we get locked down in our bunk, we're being punished. You will sit in your bunk for hours on end, and that's what you will do. The really weird part is that most of the guards in here already know who I am, and and I've had some. I don't. I don't block trolls, Metal Mama. I understand people doing that. I just. Uh, I read what they say, and I kind of wonder. Well, I'll. I'll. I'll finish this. There's only like two more minutes left. I'll finish this. Decent conversations with these guys. I'm. I'm not going to go into too much detail about about the guards or, or any details here with with any of them on the phone because. My life depends on, on not causing any kind of confrontation between myself and the guards, you know, and, I, and, I, and I'm not confrontational at all. I've, I've already read uh, Dan Brown's book called um, uh, Digital Fortress, I believe it's called, or something like that, about the NSA. I think he wrote it in 2000, the year before 9-11. And the book itself, when I read the book, it talks about how the NSA needs to have backdoors and secrets into our into our computers. You have one minute left. Dan Brown never pushes back and says, wait a minute, we, you know, he, he, he seems to have the slant that the NSA should have a backdoor into computers for our safety. So I, I, it's my first Dan Brown novel. I'm, I'm not real impressed with him not pushing back on that. Anyway, that's the update for today. So um, I love you guys, and I'll check back in tomorrow. Hopefully Brian from Here's the Deal can cover this. You guys can comment and stuff. And uh, thank you, Brian, for helping and God bless you guys for helping me. I appreciate it. I have a GoFundMe if you guys can donate to that. That would be fantastic. I love you all. All right. That's where the message ends right there. I just want to say I I understand people wanting to black block trolls. I'm not into censorship. The only time I'll maybe put somebody in timeout or get rid of them. Or, and I've never gotten rid of anybody like that. I Maybe I put somebody in timeout. The only time I do that is if somebody is blitzing the room and just spamming the room to the point where nobody else can talk and it just gets in the way. And that right there is a violation of the golden rule due to others, which you would want done to you. Like if you want to have a logical, reasonable conversation and then some third party comes in and tries to disrupt that, you know, you walk somewhere else, but if they walk with you, it's like, okay, maybe we should duct tape this guy's mouth (laughs) because he keeps coming around. Um, and maybe I need to, you know, rethink on that. I don't know. But one thing I do know is I'm trying to picture being a troll for somebody that I don't like and going into their room and just making unfounded accusations or saying I'm God and just saying all this childish, immature stuff. You're free to do that. But I'm trying to think, man, my life is so busy and I do so many things and I want to make my my life count for my kids. I want to make my life count for Trish. I want to do things that are positive in this world. And I can't imagine spending hours, let alone five minutes or two minutes on a channel of a person that I don't like making unfounded accusations about them, especially when it's clear to everybody that the person got like I'm trying to going on a troll channel and just trolling them and, and saying, I'm so glad that you, Mr. Troll are in prison. I hope the inmates do bad things to you. I'm just trying to think what kind of person do you have to be to do that? So I like to let people talk because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, what comes out of your mouth came out of your heart. That's who you are. So that's why I, that's why I hate censorship. And that's why I love letting people talk because it let, if you want to find out what somebody is all about, just let them talk. That's all you got to do. If they're a cruddy person, they will launch ad hominems at you, which has nothing to do with the argument. They don't, cause they don't have an argument. The bottom line is Chile didn't commit a crime. He didn't leave a victim. There was no lawful order. There's no 21 foot rule. The judge got her feelings hurt and, and, and officer Bork and judge Zimmerman and the prosecution can say all day long that this wasn't about recording and this wasn't about free speech, but that's exactly what it was about. You obstructed. How did he obstruct the officer from 10 feet away with words? 
How do you obstruct an officer after you obeyed his two commands to stop talking to the driver and step back, both of which he did? How do you, how do you logically resist arrest when the attempted arrest done by somebody else who didn't have a costume, you could, you could rightly defend yourself against that. How can that even be possible? Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to refresh the page on Chili's, uh, fundraiser here. Let's see, where are we at? Where are we at? Okay. So here's Chili's fundraiser. And let's just refresh the page. And I said, anybody who donates in this live stream, more than 20 bucks, I will read out. So Alan hubs, Chili, it has happened. It's, uh, has to happen at some time. See you soon. Big guy. Shanta Mallet says much love. Chili stay strong. Jessica says we find a quote. This is a quote from John Adams expanding on the rational mind or the ra- rationale behind Blackstone's ratio. We find in the rules laid down by the greatest English judge, judges who have been the brightest of mankind. We are to look upon it as more beneficial that many Guilty persons should escape punishment than one innocent person should suffer. I love that. We are to look upon it as more beneficial that many guilty persons should escape punishment than that one innocent person should suffer. Did not know that was called Blackstone's ratio. That's interesting. Abraham says Jose Chile de Castro is an absolute legend. Tyrants beware says, even though you've blocked my channel from speaking, I'm, I still stand behind. I'm still stand behind. Never give up. Never surrender. James says, keep up the good fight. Oh, that's 10 bucks. Let's see. 50 bucks. Oh, that's in the last 10 hours. Let's see. Oh, can I, let's see. See all. Oh, okay. Here we go. Jeremiah Hutton, Adam Clark, eight minutes ago, manual anonymous, Danny Hill, Alan hubs. Can you guys see that? Let me expand that for you so you can see it. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for donating to Chili's cause. You know exactly what he's going to do when he gets out. He's going to don- donate to the causes of these other people who are in some serious trouble. Anonymous 25 bucks anonymous Mark green for 20 bucks. Uh, Tarek 10 anonymous 20 James Preston. We value Michael. Theodore, whoa, the- Theodore with the big 250 bucks. Thank you, Theodore. Anonymous, Daniel Howell, Robert Wade Walker, Anonymous, Raymond, Dave Cordero, Debbie Burke, Shanta Mallet, Ignacio Herrera, Shanta Mallet, Molly Wright, Michael Lloyd, Lewis, jo- uh, Joshua, Anonymous, two Anonymouses, Nazario, Hope I don't slaughter your, your names too bad. I'm going to go for the past two hours because that's about how long we've been dealing with our technical issues. Shane, Anonymous, Joe, Anonymous, Steve with 100 bucks. Steven, Sheila, Jose, Mark Andrews, Thomas, Jeremy with 500 bucks. Holy cow. Jose, 25 bucks. Anonymous, Michael White, Jesus, William, uh, Gerardo, Jessica, Jacob, Zachary, Daryl, Peter, and Adam. Guys, I really appreciate it. I'm going to, so we're right at the door of $5,000. We're at $4,993. Thank you guys. Hey, I really appreciate it. Chili was asked to step back and stop talking to the subject. And he did, says Adam McLean. Exactly. Now, just, just real quick, for all you trolls out there, what was, if you believe... And I'm just going to go ahead and assume that you err on the side of justice. What if you believe that Chile deserves to be in jail for 18 days, let alone 180 days or 18 minutes? What was his crime? Be specific. So I'm going to look at the trolls. Metal Mama Sue says, oh, she's talking to somebody. Chile's our brother, says Bob. Amen. Amen. And we are, or at least I consider myself my brother's keeper. Where's Long Island Audit and Lackluster? Um, I'm not sure what's going on with that. I know there's some bad blood between people. Ignacio says, listen up, trolls. Mark Bear says a pin dropped. I just want to know what, what they think his, his crime was. 
Somebody says this month has been so good. Oh yeah, that's yeah. There you go. That that's the guy who says this month has been so good. Uh, all these people going to jail. Best March ever. There you go. I love it when people make it clear what's in their heart. The darkness of their heart just comes out, and they're typing it too. It's not just you know how you can say something. It's like oh man, I did not. God, I shouldn't have said that. They have to actually think about it translates to their fingers they type it and then they hit enter so you know it's in their heart i love it man because i i would rather know who i'm dealing with than somebody sucking up and saying hey i'm your friend and then stabbing you in the back i'd rather you just go ahead and tell me that you're my enemy to my face that's more commendable what's up press with ranker he followed two unlawful commands yep he did and didn't have to did not have to there's even supreme court case law Houston versus Hill. If you look it up, it's way, uh, Roy Hill did worse to the cop, uh, in his area in Houston than Chile did to the Nevada, Nevada Bork guy. His crime is not licking boots says BC. Yep. It's sickening says misconstitutional rights. <laughs> Tom circus ringleader says Roger. Let's see. I'm trying to look for the trolls. Come on, trolls. This is your time. Where, who were the trolls? I don't think he deserves it, but he wanted to play their game with his idiocy, and he did it for clout, allegedly. Play stupid games, win super prizes. Okay, so how do you substantiate that he did it for clout? I mean, could be. I don't know. I don't know. And what do you mean he did it for clout? His crime was he butt hurt the cop and the stupid judge's feelings, says Kelsey Kish. Uh, that seems evident to me. Thank you, Brian. I didn't expect my quote to be read. Funny you didn't even attempt my name. Jessica, Jessica Kierstead. Jessica Kierstead. I know it's uncommon. Kierstead. You know, in my family, and I can't remember if it was on my dad's uh, dad's or mom's sides, but two generations. Um, I have a family named Kiersitz somewhere. I don't know. I don't know which side it's on, but so Kiersitz sounds like Kierstead. So thanks, Jimmy slash Jessica. Dude, the trolls do not even care about anything. They're saying their only intent is to get the attention. I know John Francis and I always say, don't feed the trolls. And here I go feeding the trolls. But you know what? Like I, I picture a troll in a chat room. Like let's say you're taking the red eye in Washington DC on their, on their subway system. And you're sitting next to these people who are trolls. I'd want to have a conversation with them because I want to find, I, I want to know why they do what they do. Are, are they, are they just scummy, cruddy people just to be scummy and cruddy? Like what kind of relationship do they have with their kids? What kind of relationship do they have with their fellow man? Are they somebody that you want to be around? Cause it doesn't seem like they would be. And then I just want to, another thing too, is I think everybody's rehabilitatable. You know, we're all on some kind of path today that we probably won't be in the next week or month because things humble you and it causes you to pause and reflect and go, man, have I been a bad person? Am I saying bad things? Am I spread overall? Am I spreading negativity? or positivity in my life. Cause if it's negativity and it's negativity for no freaking reason at all, maybe I should rethink what I'm doing and recalibrate and maybe get a new trajectory. Chain link says chili hurt cops and judges feelings. Yep. And they're easy to hurt too. Sadly. Like I said, in the beginning of the live stream, when I was trying to live stream on Chili's channel, Judge Ann Zimmerman had a golden opportunity to deflect everything that offended her and just go, Chili, I tell you what, I can tell that you don't like me and you think I'm a tyrant. And, you know, in some ways I can understand why you would think that. But I am here to dispense justice, Ann Zimmerman should have said. While you've kind of offended me deeply and I don't like the fact that you called my court marshals pigs, I can't see any reason to continue on with this case. The case is dismissed. There was no lawful order. If she was honest, she would say this. There was no lawful order. There's no 21 foot rule like Bork learned in the academy. Uh, Bork lied on the stand three times. It's like everybody's just 
all the objective stuff, people are just shoving under the rug and it's this big mound with this big sperm whale wiggling under it and everybody sees it happening, but nobody wants to talk about it. So Zimmerman should have said no lawful commands were issued. Bork lied three times. There's no 21 foot rule. You obeyed the two commands you didn't have to obey. You could have still talked to the driver if you wanted to. And under the first amendment, uh, you could have continued, you know, berating the cop if you wanted to. And officer safety will never trump individual rights, common rights. But Ann Zimmerman didn't say that. You know why? Because she couldn't say that. She doesn't have the maturity level. She doesn't have the spiritual awareness. She doesn't have the light, the heart of light. She has a heart of darkness. So she ha- she's in a vortex. She's in an evil, tyrannical vortex. She had to make the decision that she did to put an innocent man behind bars because she has the ring of power and power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And it had to come out of there because it's in her. It would have never come out and Chile wouldn't be serving 180 days right now if the darkness wasn't inside of Ann Zimmerman. Because objectively speaking, there wasn't a law. There weren't lawful orders. Bork did lie on the stand. There is no Supreme Court case law uh, that, that Chile violated. There is no law that came out of Washington's District of Criminals. There's no Nevada state law. There's not even a statute or an ordinance against what he did. And yet he went to jail anyway. And she's supposed to be a dispenser of justice. Imagine that. Imagine a person who calls themselves a justice. They call themselves a judge, a doer of what is right, a a discerner of the population, a punisher of wrong and a rewarder of right. Imagine that person making a decidedly wrong, evil, misguided, non-substantiated decision to put a man in a cage for no freaking reason. Joe, uh, um, Chile will appeal. He, he has another lawyer. This next lawyer is a high powered lawyer, supposedly with a great track record and, uh, kind of a, I don't know, a bent toward, um, civil rights and he's going to cost more money. And that's why we're doing this drive. Cause it's going to cost him 25,000 bucks. Now, Michael, me, if you're watching this, you should give Chile his money back. You did him wrong. Anybody who knows anything about doing what is right could have easily torn up Bork on the stand. And all you had to do is submit Chili's video and put Chili's video and the, the, the video that was shown to the court side by side. All you had to do was just a little bit of editing homework. You could have had somebody else do it. You could have done what I did. Look, you could have done this right here. And I'm not putting myself on a pedestal by any means, but I do want, I want to show you this. You could have... Where is it? Let's let us see here. Yeah, let's see. You could have done this. You could have, this this was so simple to do. You could have done this. Watch. I'm going to start at the very it's the very beginning of the video. Watch it not play. When you asked the defendant to back up, did he follow your order? No, he did not. That's a lie. Did he follow your order? Watch. We're going to see see Cops lie. Video cameras don't. Okay, so the prosecution is asking Officer Bork, who was out there getting his feelings hurt by Chili, when you asked him to back up, did he back up? When you asked the defendant to back up, did he follow your order? No, he did not. Look, he's backing up. I gave him three additional warnings to back up. Look, let me show you. Here, oh, let's see. That's not in frame. Let's get that in frame. Here's before the command, he's inside, his his right foot is almost completely inside that white line. And then after he was told to back up, that if, if Chili's shoe size is anywhere near 12 inches, you take 12 inches, 12 inches, 12 inches, he's at least three feet back from where he was. He did back up. Three times Bork said he didn't back up. And then when he was questioned lightly by Michael Mead, he goes, well, he didn't back up zero feet. He did back. He just didn't back up enough. And then he said again that he didn't back up. So which one is it? Did he back up a little bit or did he not back up at all? Because there's a difference. When you got a guy who's willing to lie on the stand about something that can be 100% verified on the stand through video evidence, you've got a witness that the case is thrown. The case is blown at that point.
Michael Mee should have got to, on top of his desk and said, judge, he lied. The world is going to see that he lied. And the world is going to see that you saw that he lied and you still put a guy in jail. That's what Michael Mee should have done. His forehead should have been moist with sweat. He should have been taken off his jacket with, with moisture under his armpits. Breathing fire if you had to. But you can't tolerate this. Judge, do you realize how unjust it is for this man, this Bork, Officer Bork, to take the this, take this stand with, with some man's life in his hands, contingent on his testimony, whether he's going to tell the truth or lie, and he lie, he chooses to lie in the face of freaking video evidence? Let me show you something, Judge. And this is all Michael Mee. This is why I'm so incensed at Michael Mee. All he had to do was this right here. Watch. I'm just going to play it over. And I'll try to zip my freaking lip. Watch this. When you asked the defendant to back up, did he follow your order? No, he did not. Okay. I gave him three additional warnings to back up. Okay. And did he um, obey those orders? No, he did not. <laughs> I don't really want to be part of your YouTube channel. So you already are. Great. You already are. He's a pig. Excuse me? I said he's a pig. Okay. Is that true? Isn't it true? The guy did not have to take his cell phone like that, but he knows he has the power and he knows Chili can't resist his power because as soon as he does, they're going to dogpile him. They know they got the power. And it's not even so much that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, but power does draw and attract like a freaking magnet, the corruptible. If you're corruptible, you want the ring of power. If you're humble, and you have a golden character, you don't want power over other people. Like, why, why would you have it? You're not going to wield it. No, but there's more, but wait, there's more. So I'm not going to permit you to speak to anybody in my courtroom in that manner. He wants this. He wants to get arrested. He wants to get into an altercation with police officers. He welcomes this. This helps his YouTube channel. He called the officers here in my courtroom today. What an accusation. Do you have, this is a judge who's supposed to be judging impartially and she's judging the mode. She doesn't even, she couldn't possibly know the motive of why Chili does what he does. Could he be doing this for views? Could he be doing this for his YouTube channel? Possibly. Does she know that for sure? It's not her place to even be saying anything like this. You had one job, judge, do what is right. Judge what is just discern between right and wrong and pick the right every single time. And don't let your feelings get in the way. Cause as soon as you do, you'll lose the plot. He called me and he's not his up and down. So apparently he hates every law enforcement officer in the United States. All right. Please stand up, sir. Mind there you go. And, and so she got triggered at that. And then she gave him 180 days. Now here is officer Bork from the Nevada police department. Here's what triggered him. A D word triggered Bork. Officer in the United States. All right. Please stand up, sir. Mind your own business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that's a good point too, Bob Burton. He said it's completely irrelevant and it is. It's let's, let's say it was Chili's motivation to pr be provocative, to be a provocateur and to provoke police to act so he could get YouTube v views. He's got a free speech right to do that. He's got a right under freedom of press to do that, to be provocative. And it's completely irrelevant whether you call a, it doesn't, it has no bearing on the case that you think the cops in the courtroom are pigs. No bearing at all. And it's provable. You can prove that they're pigs. A pig is just the syn synonym for tyrant. You're just being a tyrant. You're being a hater. How about this? Instead of tyrant, you are being a hater and despiser of liberty, which means you're a hater and despiser of the life that could take advantage of liberty. And don't we all want to take advantage of and enjoy the benefits of liberty? Yes, absolutely. We do. So Chili's out there not harming anybody. And, and obviously look at, look at the face of the, the, the person in the car right here. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see her face? She is absolutely not scared. Well, the fear factor of the driver was brought up in court, which is absolutely irrelevant because you could tell on her face and how she was interacting with Chili initially that she wasn't scared at all. She was having a conversation with him. And the cop comes out of his car going, this is my traffic stop. 
Oh, I'm the king here. This is my domain. Really? Huh. Didn't know that. I'm a member of the press. Go get in your car and do your job, little doggy. And that, and right after that, that's all. It, it wasn't even a second, guy. Get get in your car, little doggy. And now he starts coming at Chile. Her. You're being detained right now. Okay, that's <laughs> An American is... And they say it's not about speech and it's not about the camera when that's exactly what it's about. So let's go back to this fundraiser. I'm just going to hit refresh if there's no more. Holy cow. Holy cow. This thing just went up $700 in the last 10 minutes. All right. So we got to read the last ones here. David. David Testa, 100 bucks. Thank you. Leon, $5. John, 25 Anonymous, 100 Uh Hernan, sorry, guys. Uh, 15 Jeffrey, 25 Did I already read Ray, David Ray? I don't think so. 100 Danny, 25 Stephen, holy cow. I'm going to try it. Stephen Sheppelman, 200 Jeremiah, 30 Adam Clark, 100 And I think I've already caught up. Manual. 25. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to leave the link again. If you guys want to support Chile, I've demonstrated clearly, and this is, this is supposedly what he went to jail for. This is his crime guys. I'm going to play it back. Here's the link. It's also in the pin comment in the chat. If you want to, I'll, I'll, I'll play it again. It's only a two and a half, three minute clip. I'll play it again to demonstrate to you the supposed crime that Chile committed that landed him a half a year in jail. I'm, I'm sorry. It's in, it's a minute and three seconds. So in the next minute, and three seconds, when I go back to the, the GoFundMe page, I'll refresh it and I'll, I'll call out the last uh, donators. So, or <laughs> don donators. Oh my gosh. I'm tired. Okay. So let's here. Let's, let's just drive this home. Michael, me take notes. You better take notes. You had a man's life in your hand and you blew it. When you asked the defendant to back up, did he follow your order? No, he did not. Okay. I gave him three additional warnings to back up. Okay. And did he um, obey those orders? No, he did not. Yes, he did. I don't really want to be part of your YouTube channel. So you already are. Great. You already are. He's a pig. Excuse me? I said he's a pig. Okay. I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> now, maybe I wouldn't have done that because I'm a chicken shit. You're a coward, man. He's the reason that I'm like, no, that's just not, it's not in me to like treat somebody like that. You know, it's in me to defend myself if somebody comes at me, but it's not in me to like poke the bear, so to speak. You know what I mean? There's a time for everything and a season for activ every activity under the sun. And I just don't think that that is the exact right time to express your true undiluted without wax feelings. By the way, did you know that's what sincere means? If you look up the etymology of sincere, it's a uh, sign of Sarah, which means without wax. In other words, you're getting, you're getting me. This is me, man. This is me. This is me. So I would not advise talking to a judge like that because <laughs> it may not go well for you. So I'm not going to permit you to speak to anybody in my courtroom in that manner. He wants this. He wants to get arrested. He wants to. This is where Michael me should have stood up and said, can you prove that honor your honor accusation without substantiation is the height of it, height of ignorance. Can you prove any one of your inser assertions about why Chile that you're, you're making a blanket judgment on Chile's motives here. Can you substantiate those? Cause as far as I see it, you're out of order, way out of order. And besides, let's say that was his motivation. It's absolutely irrelevant to the facts of the case. Irrelevant get into an altercation with the police officers. He welcomes this. This helps his YouTube channel. He called the officers here in my courtroom to take pigs. He called the, and he's not in his head up and down. I so apparently you. he hates every law enforcement officer in the United States. All right, please stand up, sir. Mind your own business. I'm a member of the press. Go get in your car and do your job, little doggy. <laughs> Go feed her. You're being detained right now. Okay, then detain me. An American is lying. I like what Bob said. Bob said they did something like that to his brother. And uh, the, the judge goes, 
you're going to you're going to jail and he's like what's for breakfast <laughs> all right i'm gonna go back to this if there's no other ones if there are some i will read them okay so there are no other ones okay guys i appreciate you joining thank you so much for being patient and working with me through the technicalities that we had early on. What I will do is I will get with Chili's assistant and maybe he can render this video out and put it up on Chili's channel. I really wanted him to get credit for that. I just put the I just put the GoFundMe in the chat again. Let's let's see if we can't get him up to this goal, guys. I really appreciate it. the goal is twenty five thousand dollars. He needs a good lawyer. He needs to get out so that he can be about the work of pushing back the tides of tyranny and start letting freedom ring. Guys, I really appreciate you. Thank you for joining. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell notification icon. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with everybody you know. I have a brand new design, but it's not in the store yet. It will be in the store soon. Uh, the last one is the last one was what? What was my last design? This is the second to the last design. And this is uh, my rights don't end where your fears begin. So we could just we could just leave it at that. Let me put that right there. Okay, guys, thank you for joining. Subscribe, like, share. I think there's a new function on YouTube where if you say smash that like button, the like button is supposed to light up and do some like colory sparkly thing, which is kind of cool. Okay, guys. Yep. Shakur, Shakur Capital says we don't stop and we don't. We don't. Give me liberty or give me